Yes! Yes! Mountain Dew Baja Blast is here. Oh! Don't! It happened! It happened! That's not what this video is about, but holy shit, it happened! Ah. Ah. We all can relax now. And now that we're relaxed, let's get into a recent retros pickup. It's been like, I don't know, two years? I have no idea. So I've got a little bit of everything here from um, PC to PlayStation to Nintendo to PC to to 64 to PC to PlayStation 2 to PSP to PC to Indie to Wii to PC. Did I already say PC? Yeah. All right, <laughs> so let's just get right into it. Um, how do I start out here? God, I don't even know how to start this. I haven't done this in so long. I don't even know what to do anymore. Uh, Goodwill, dollar. You know, you all know what that is. Pretty cool, right? These sell for about 20 to 25 out there. It's the N64 expansion pack there. Very nice. Um, Asteroid 64 on the Nintendo 64. Very good. Um, I haven't played this before, but this is a, in really good shape, and who doesn't love Asteroids? So this this ought to be pretty fun. I wonder if it has multiplayer. That could be cool. Cool little game there. Yes, how about a little uh, Game Boy Advance action there for you? F14 Tomcat. I only, got, I only have one for PS2 here, so let's go ahead and do that. Ford Racing. Ford Racing 2. That means there was a first one, folks. All that means is that there was a first one, folks. Ford Racing 2. It was dirt cheap, so, you know, it's hard for me to pass up, you know, any of these racing games. Oh, for crying out loud! Making a video. Text messaging going off. Let's go ahead and hit into some of this PSP, huh? I, uh, God, see, it's been so long. So December, uh, when Wally World was having their $100 PSP special, I picked up, see, I should have that over here too, which I don't, it's over there. I picked up a PSP 3000, and it, it came with a bundle of games, and it allowed me to pick my bundle. So in the bundle, they had those two-for-one, like the double box games. So I picked up, at the end of the day, I picked up a total of four games in the PSP, three thousand for a hundred bucks, and I thought, wow, that's that's an incredible deal. Plus, I've been wanting to get into that console, um, and now that it's on its uh, way out, it's a good time to get into it. It's a good time to collect for PSP right now, too, guys. If you're ever um, thinking about doing that, um, anyway. Okay, so here's some PSP love for you: uh, Star Wars Battlefront, Renegade Squadron. Haven't played this before. Um, this came out 2007. And uh, it looks like it's a third person action, but it looks like it has. It says, fight the classic Star Wars battles any way and anywhere you want. That's kind of intriguing. New story, new battles, new features. So it looks like you can go play battles from all over the place. Battlefront. Renegade Squadron. Miami Vice. The game. The game. The game. You know it's shitty. Can you pass up $2? No. Dirt 2. These games are fun. These are really, really good. Um rally kind of rally cross games and but they have really good graphics but they have really nice control as well I, i've always loved the dirt series this is dirt 2 get dirty big shout out to my good friend mr john gamester 81 for a successful release on his ColecoVision game gamester 81 the video game i got mine right here this is um the signed red label. I'm very excited and um, honored to have it. This is a really cool game. Look this up. Check this out. Get a copy if you can. I know they're pretty rare. 
great game. Congratulations. I'm, I'm thrilled to have you as my best friend. And I'm so happy to have this in my collection. I got it up on display right up there on the top shelf. So thanks again. And I just wanted to show everyone, you know, that's it right there. Very cool. Let's jump into a little PS1. World's scariest police chases. Oh my God. On PS1. Oh, don't you hate it when that happens? It looks like I paid $4 for it. You know, it's not very good, but who doesn't want today on a world's scariest police chases? This is a, this is a really good Treasures of the Deep, a Namco classic right here. This is a really, really fun game and one that I always thought was very beautiful back in the day. Look at the back, too. What What is this? What is this? God, people. Oh, it won't come off. I'll just keep pulling it. Stop it. This is a fun game. Star Wars, Episode 1, Jedi Power Battles. If you were... I did a live stream of this um, on May the 4th for Star Wars Day. I played it with um, Stephanie. And it was fun. Hard as hell, though. I didn't realize till about halfway through the game that it actually has a... I think it's L1 you press and then you have a lock-on system. Because when you attack, your your character like goes through an attack animation, and you can't move when it's doing that. So it gets a little crazy if you don't know that. The game kind of sucks if you don't know that. And I found that out like halfway through. So, but this is a really fun game. It's like a um, it's basically kind of like a beat 'em up in a way, like a, a top down. Um, well, here, yeah, like a top down beat 'em up. Yeah, you know, it's hard to see. I know. I'm getting some reflections going on with my monitor there. I know. I'm sorry. I found this off. I found this off. I found this. See, I'm thinking half off. I found this at Goodwill on half off day. That's what I meant to say. Right there. Wii Sports. One of my favorite all-time games on Nintendo Wii. Launch title. Came with the console. But um, really, really good. Found it for $2. Pretty good. You can never have enough uh, Wii Sports because, you know, they don't. They don't really, they don't sell that, as far as I know. Like, you can't go to, well, I mean, you could probably find it everywhere at this point, but they don't sell it brand new from Nintendo. Um, that's another PC. I got quite a bit of PC going on there. Let's go ahead and hit up some NES. Had a really good find at a Goodwill recently. You can't beat Dr. Mario. It's a really nice uh, cart as well. The stickers are all intact. Everything's really nice, shiny. It's clean all the way around. Very happy with this. Smoke-free home. Came with the the dust cover, official dust cover. Very nice. Three dollars. I feel like that's fair for for Doctor Mario, one of the greatest uh, puzzle games. Pac Mania. Really neat. From Tengen. I'm not sure how rare it is, but I haven't seen too many out in the wild. Kind of a rare Pac-Man game. And the best here that I found. Same Goodwill. But they had them in... You know what's funny? It's This is what's so crazy about... Sometimes people have no idea what they're doing. So, these two games were in the case. The glass case. You guys know about the glass case, right? That's where they put their, you know, high-end or rare or whatever. So, these two were in the case. And they were like, you know, three ninety nine. I'm like, yeah, I'll take them take them both so i got those but then over in the cd section and software section you guys know they put they put stuff over there you got to be careful because you never know over the cd and software section i had these two sitting here yoshi and yoshi's cookie sitting there um like by the CDs, these are honestly I, I would say that they're mint, in box complete. They have the um, the game, the dust cover, the styrofoam, and the manuals. And if you look at these, I mean they are shiny. They're they're straight. There's no creases. God, the camera just the autofocus. I know. I'm sorry. It just pisses me off. It never. It doesn't ever work right. 
But anyway, I mean, like, look at the box. It's it's very clean. There's really hardly any shelf wear. There's just a little bit on the top there, just right on the corner, just barely. Damn thing. But yeah, I mean, these are mint in box. Here's Yoshi's cookie. Came from the same home, obviously. This one has just a little bit more wear on the top, just on the edges, just barely. But the rest of it's very nice. I mean, the game is still, like, nice and tight in there. And, God, it's just great. Yoshi's Cookie. Mmm. <laughs> but I was like, what? And those aren't in the glass case? You know, that just goes to show. It's like, they, you know, they don't know from one thing to the other. This was, I thought, a little a little steep, but I went with it anyway. It was 5 bucks, even though most places sell used controllers anywhere between... I've seen them 10 to 20 bucks. So in good shape, you know, in perfect shape, I would pay 15, right? Because I think you can still buy these new, I believe. I don't know. I might be wrong. But I found it in a really good shape, a blue PS2 controller. And I'm, I'm really a partial to the blue one because the blue one was the first controller I went out and bought myself. Like I, this was like that I would take to my friends' homes and I would play at home. Like that was mine. Like when I showed up to the game night, Bitches, boom, I'm plugging this in. This is me. I'm blue, bitch. So this is it. And so I saw it out in the wild. It was five bucks. And it's a really good shape. It's a little dirty, but has a nice tight joystick. And all in all, it's uh, in really good shape. And it works just fine. So you can't ever have enough of these. You'll love it. So in PS2, you know, get a lot of use. So five bucks, that was pretty good. And again, big shout out to my friend Cody, who uh, hooked me up with this. I'm super excited about it. This is the... LodgeNet. Now, if you, I, I actually have another video on my channel here of LodgeNet uh, controllers, so you should check that out too. But this one I don't have. This is the LodgeNet GameCube controller. So this is basically it's an officially branded. You know, I'll be able to see that. There we go. O official branded controller. Um, on the back, it does say LodgeNet. Ninety. It says ninety-seven Nintendo. Right? When did the GameCube come out? Yeah, do the math. That's what's crazy about it. It says 97 Nintendo. I don't know why it does that. Um, because 97, the GameCube wasn't even out yet. But this is cool. It's got the order, menu buttons. You would be able to cycle through your TV channels, your pay-per-view, and also play your video games with this. And you could do it all from the controller, too. And it uses like a, an old-school landline phone jack to connect to it. And he actually gave me the whole thing, the, the cable box... The cable, the power adapter, all the connectors, everything, which is really cool. I don't have it out, but um, that would be neat. I tried to plug it all in and see if it worked, and of course it, it doesn't, but still really cool. Big shout out to you, Cody. Thanks again for this. I love collecting these. This is really rare stuff, you know. Um, you would be charged about 30 bucks if you were to have stolen this out of the room. I don't know how I know that. All right, let's hit you with PC now, because I got quite a bit of PC stuff. You know, I'm a big PC collector. So let's start from the top. It's in no order here. Um, well, I don't have a whole lot, but I have more. I just didn't bring it all in. I don't want to bore you guys with nothing but PC stuff. Uh, Clive Baker's Jericho. I found this for like 250 at the thrift shop. And the thing with this is because um, this guy, he is the creator of Hellraiser. So it's kind of like this horror, like, it's a shooter, and it's supposed to be kind of like a horror thriller type um, squad-based game. I played a little bit of it. It's actually fun. I like it a lot. Um, you have like a squad that you that goes with you, and you can kind of tell them to follow you or hold or attack, which is kind of neat. Um, what year is this? Because I know it definitely did for 2006. It's not bad. It's not the you know it's not like super great, but it's it's a fun little mindless shooter. It's not very scary, but it's still fun. Uh, Codemasters on the board. Got some jewel cases here. Let's see what we got. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. Yes. X Scooter. A no rules kickboard adventure. It's basically you're on like Razor scooters. And I got to be honest with you. I played the game for a little bit. It is shitty. 
Oh my god, it's bad. Value soft. That's that should be your first clue. But who doesn't want a, a Razer scooter game? Who doesn't want that? It was a dollar. So cool. I can't believe I actually got it to install. System requirements: 90, Windows 95, 98, Windows ME, a 266 megahertz Pentium processor or greater, 150 megabytes of hard drive space. Holy shit! Oh, and a 2x CD-ROM drive, and two megabytes of RAM. Two. Oh, 32. I was about to say, what the? Cool to have in the collection, anyway. Nothing more needs to be said. Great game. Pop quiz. At the beginning of this game, you start somewhere. What are you standing on? That's the question. Answer it in the comments below. <laughs> Goofy skateboarding? What? What? You've done it now, Disney, you cash counting bitches. You've done it now. You better cash in. Is this not the most Tony Hawk ripoff cash in on a freaking... Oh, goodness gracious. Windows 95, 98. Oh, God. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, I meant to do this one after Mist. I found this for $5. Mist Trilogy. It has, it has Mist. It has Riven. And it has missed three. All, all inside here. Cool to collect, you know. Plus this big box looks really nice on the shelf. Wow, yeah, check it out. Look at all this stuff. Yeah. So it's got Mist Masterpiece Edition. Which I think was just recently released on GOG. There's Riven. The sequel to Mist. And then there's Miss 3. Exile. PC Magazine, best of 2001. All right. Found two of these, actually. Stephanie got one and I got one. I'm really, I'm really happy to have this, actually. This was very um, short-lived. Was the... Not the game. <laughs> the game is bananas. But this, the actual physical copy. So in 2000, what was it? Nine? 2008 yeah when this came out yeah that's right 2009 was or 2010 was the second one so when this came out um you know nowadays they just do a, a digital copy and that's it they don't even give you physical copies but they were still doing that at this time that's why this is really rare but yeah this is a uh, left for dead the original physical copy oh <laughs> complete it's got a uh, cd key in there so i won't show that not that you can read it anyway but really cool to uh to have that in a collection. I love having the physical copy of, of stuff like this. Games that were once re released as physical and then they pulled them and then did digital only. That's really cool to have. And save the best for last with the PC stuff here. I found this in the wild too at the Goodwill. This is, uh, I, w I would say, uh, I don't know if I'd say it's mint, but it's it's pretty pretty damn close. This is a complete inbox X Star Wars X-Wing. This is the collector CD-ROM version of it, which is really neat. And I love this stuff. This is why I, this is why I love the big box, you know, PC collecting stuff. Yeah, look at that. I even left a sticker on. Five ninety nine. There it is. Paid five ninety nine for it. There's the back of it. Very cool. Just love this game. What's cool is that I also got out my USB joystick and plugged it in, and it works just fine for it. So cool. But here's what came on the inside of it. Amazing stuff. So you've got the X-Wing. you got the Starfighter Pilot Manual, which is basically the manual to the game. This is really rare. and Sometimes people will pay big money just to get this alone. The It's backwards because people were probably reading it. The... Starfighter reference card, or, or as some people would call them, quick key guide. Basically, it has all the keys to the game, the quick key, so that if you wanted to read up on it quickly and know what the hell you're doing, this is how you do it. Really neat. Look at that. Um, more info, technical questions, the, the contact info for the LucasArts number there. It has the, the mailer, LucasArts Entertainment. Look at that. Around the back there, a questionnaire. 
you know, all that sort of thing. Look at that. I just purchased the game. My personal computer is, do you own a modem? Fill out the following, operating system. Oh my God, look at this shit. God, I wish you could see it. So cool. So cool. And then it obviously came with the disc, the collector CD, just like it did from factory there. Very cool. And the best of all, it came with a, uh, a floppy CD boot disc. Isn't that great? Look at that. Yep. It wasn't easy being a PC gamer back in the day. We had to do all kinds of shit to get it to work. But very rewarding, nevertheless. All right, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of those games. Do you got any uh, personal attachments to some of those? And, uh, you know, let me know what's up. I appreciate you watching. These are always fun to do. Just to sit and shoot the shit about the games. And uh, show you what I've got. I'll have some more in the future, of course. I have... I mean, I can't even tell you how many plug and plays I've got. I mean, I could... I don't, I'm not even going to do it. I could throw in a, like three or four plug and plays in this, but it's already gone too long. Let's just let it rest there. I will do a video uh, probably specifically on plug and plays down the road. So anyway... You guys, have a fantastic day. Thanks again for joining in on the Emulator Review. Make sure to follow me on Twitter um, at the EMU Review. Uh, Facebook, the EMU Review. Like that page. And um, you guys take care. We'll catch you later. <laughs> yep. I do a pretty good goofy, actually. <laughs> yep. Well, it's all right. It's not bad. I'll work on it. Later. <laughs> <laughs>